Cajeti is a region set apart, I think, in Georgia. It's a huge valley standing in the foothills of the Caucasus Mountains right against it. It's a great climate for growing almost every grape that exists in Georgia. Sapiravi Iricatateli, to me, are some of the most noble grape varieties that we have in Georgia. What we see in Cajeti is a level of elegance and winemaking that the other regions are aspiring to. The infrastructure and the tradition that's existing in Cafeti really shines through. Um, as a continental, very easy to go in climate, it will always be a star in the Georgian winemaking scene. So Orgo started in 2011, and the key idea of Orgo Winery was preservation and the promotion of older wines. It was a kind of link between our family's tradition and ancient winemaking. The first query wine we bottled was vintage 2002. At present, so we have more than 200 small wineries producing query wines. So, mm -hmm. done? We cover query outside with mix of sand, concrete and limestone. What do you guys put on the inside of the query? Bee wax. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's very important for risk management. Some of them are big, some of them are small. In general, Cajeti, they're very big. Why are they, yeah. why are they so big? <laughs> it should sizes. be... Uh, how to say optimal, men should jump inside for washing. This is like a great dream. <laughs> yeah, here we can keep an age up to 15,000 bottles. Wow, that much. Yeah, yes, yeah. Here I keep vintage 2013. It's a year when my uh, grandson was born. Wow. Cazzitelli, seven years old. Now when you start it's to see very this. well matured, right. so we can feel here the secondary aromas. Right. So more raisins. Spices, mm -hmm. dried fruits. Yeah, you don't get as much of that, uh, especially in the middle of the palate. Really soft. There's a and the long, long finish, but the, the tannins are dry, but they're much softer here now. Softer, yes, it but should be dry. It looks like the seven-year-old's even a little bit darker, so maybe it's a little bit vintage. Yeah, I would say that close? It's, it's, it's close. Oh, yeah, but maybe yeah. a little, you're getting kind of a smokiness to this. I don't know if you're getting that as well. Like a silky mm. character. So soft. Very soft. And same time, so full with tennis, but with very soft tennis. So how do you think older vines are affecting your wine's ageability? It's, you know, obviously they're giving different quality. Does that play a part in the, how well you, your wines are aging? Yes, older wines produce fewer grapes, but very concentrated, and uh, they are rich with phenolics, with uh, tannins, and it's a reason so why uh, wines made out of older wines are very potential uh, for aging, yeah. 
Tahiti is famous with grape growing. So here we have moderate continental climate with hot summers and quite cold winter. What's the relationship with mountains and the river valley? So right now, so we are passing River Alazani. Alazani splits Alazani Valley in two parts. So now we are entering right bank of River Alazani. Left bank is closer to Caucasian mountains, comparing with right bank. Right bank is richer with clay, sand, and minerals formation sea. And we're kind of in the middle of the Caucasus, I see. So this is the, this place, what is this place called, this village? Kondoli. Kondoli, yeah. Which is particularly, it's in the middle of Kacheti. Here we have less sun comparing the left bank. So we have uh, winds and breeze uh, from uh, west to east. And so in general, the vineyards where we're located here, this is the south mm -hmm. and north. West, yes, and east, and so you have this crosswind blowing that's going to protect from mildew and other things like this. We are in a place which is surrounded with Caucasus and this uh, Tsilgombori uh, mount. Beautiful. Who planted this vineyard and when? It was planted uh, around more than 50 years ago uh, by my grandfather. This is Rkaziteli. It's an old wine, 60 years old. Tell me about pruning. In older vines, you have to prune a little differently, or no? Yeah, we, we prune uh, as a guillo system. So it's low cropping uh, wine. You yeah. see, we have just maybe seven bunches. Okay. And so we get uh, approximately 1.5 kilo uh, per wine tree. Wow, that's low for Cajeti. Probably. It's very low, but our focus is to get quality grapes, not quantity. Dilao Amber, made in query, natural yeast, skin contact, low sulfur, real Georgian wine. In general, I think it's a perfect introduction to understand Cajeti, a great way, of, especially for an American, somebody who doesn't know amber wine, it's a great way to, to learn about it. Yes, it's the idea of this blend. Is that, so I decided to connect strengths from Western style with strengths with Eastern style. So to me, it seems like you found one of your missions in life, at least, making wine. It was a, my dream. And from early childhood, I decided to be a winemaker. And it's a big pleasure for me to make wine together with family. Did you imagine that this was where you were going to be happy and free to do all the things that you wanted to do? Or can you think back to that time? Yes, sure. I was absolutely sure that this style, query wine, had to have a great future. So now that you've achieved your dream, what's, what is it that you really hope to continue to do for the rest, as long as you can? To make new wines. So it's my intention to make more experiments, to explore new things. So this is my intention. So you're winemaking. How much? Thank you. How much? <laughs> just. So in 2012, a real renaissance came back to Georgian wine and I've been a part of that. And it's been such an exciting thing to see that we've gone from almost no places where you could sit down, do a tasting, have this sort of modern wine culture to hundreds, if not thousands now, of small family wineries, of large wineries. You have medium-sized wineries. You have all of the different sizes now in Georgia. A lot of different futures, a lot of different families coming to realize what it means to be free, um, especially after a period of almost a hundred years of ruling by the Soviet Union, people are finding their freedom in winemaking and finding that they can say their own voice. They're able to mix this tradition of 8,000 years of winemaking and what they remember before the Soviet times with their modern aspirations. And to me, it's a real picture of what a full life can be. And it's so interesting that Georgia has a culture where that can never be separated from winemaking.